DC Comics was once the universe of hope and heroic ideals to strive for. DC Comics is now the universe of hopelessness and ugliness. The comic book industry had been waiting to see if despite all that came before it, Tom King could stick the landing with Heroes in Crisis number 9. Absolutely not. If anything, issue 9 compounds all the issues Tom King has with the series. The concept behind Heroes in Crisis is interesting. King's mishaps with terrible pacing, plot holes, and mischaracterizations became insurmountable obstacles all the way back at issue 5. Since then, King only dug the hole deeper until the conclusion of the series. In the end, Heroes in Crisis became the darkest, most mismanaged, dreary after-school special in history. I've also heard DC Comics plans to do a Heroes in Crisis follow-up miniseries starring Wally West. The chutzpah on Dan Didio and Jim Lee. They greenlit the assassination of Wally's character. Now they want to follow it up with a cash grab starring the disgraced Flash. A lot of people will talk about what this story means about King personally. I'm not in any way, shape, or form qualified to do that. If I were, it probably wouldn't be appropriate to talk about it on YouTube. I'm only here to talk about the merit of Tom King's work. In that regard, King is in an extremely dark place creatively. It's okay to go dark with characters, but to throw away their history and personality to suit stories is wrong. It's piss poor storytelling. If King were truly among the best writers in the business today, he wouldn't need to do that. He would make the story fit the characters, not the other way around. After Heroes in Crisis and the current Batman story, I can comfortably say King is the worst writer at the big two in my opinion. That includes Bendis, Cullen Bunn, Cecile Castellucci, Teeny Howard, Vida Ayala, and Tom Taylor. There's no more hiding it. He can't write a coherent narrative for his characters right now. With that, let's crack this some bitch open. First things first, Clayman returns to illustrate issue 9. He's been fantastic every issue he's drawn. Once again, his phenomenal artwork is wasted by a pretentious, poorly executed script. He also does great work leaving space for King's bloated dialogue this week. No small feat in and of itself. The Watchmen-like nine-panel grids in Heroes in Crisis are still here and still pompous as hell. There are so many plots to wrap up, it's borderline shocking King found space for four of these pages. But he did. My assumption is these are new patients at Sanctuary following the events of Heroes in Crisis. I can't believe for an instance Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman didn't learn from their mistake and close Sanctuary for good following the mass murders. There are also several continuity errors, most notably Dick Grayson portrayed as Nightwing and Jessica Cruz being on Earth. Get your shit together, DC editorial! Issue 9 begins with the heartwarming scene of our Wally, five days in the future, preparing to break his future self's neck. This is very disturbing imagery, to say the least. At this point, Wally is firmly established as a mass murderer who framed innocent people for his crimes. So I guess killing himself like this fits the character now. Future Wally tells himself his last wishes before allowing his life to be terminated. Just as the deed is about to be done, the team of Batgirl, Harley Quinn, Booster Gold, and Blue Beetle crash land seemingly right on top of the two Wallys. The team try to gain their bearing, and King continues to mischaracterize Batgirl, who shouldn't even be here in the first place. She's now calling Harley Quinn, a serial killer in her own right, Hun. It feels completely out of place and forced by King. Nobody is going to accept Batgirl and Harley Quinn as anything except mortal enemies forever. The Knot team exit Blue Beetle's ship and start refreshing the story for the readers. Batgirl guesses Wally is the killer. He framed Harley and Booster using the VR chambers at Sanctuary, then traveled to the future and killed himself to use the body as evidence. She's one smart cookie. Why didn't she solve the case earlier? Anyhow, they arrive in time to stop the suicide, and Harley sees her main squeeze, Ivy. I absolutely loathe how King writes Harley. I'm personally no fan of the character, 
but riding her is a mentally stunted 10-year-old who speaks in sentence fragments and lullabies is awful characterization. And what does it say about Ivy that she would be with someone who speaks in prattle? Just terrible. Poison Ivy has been regrown, to use her own words. She's not quite herself yet, as demonstrated by her off-kilter speech pattern. But she knows she still loves mentally defunct Harley, and that's all that matters. Remember that flower from issue 2 or 3? Apparently, Ivy placed a blah, 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 blah. In most books, this garbage would be the absolute worst payoff. In Heroes in Crisis, it's not even sniffing the top three. We finally make it to the after-school special portion of the book. Our Wally breaks down because he knows he still needs to kill his older self. His older self no longer wishes to allow him to snap his neck and decides now is the time to speak to himself. Wally knows Wally messed up because he's hurting, but Wally wants Wally to know he's not alone. On a serious note, this book is supposed to be about overcoming PTSD and other mental health issues. Why isn't Wally's friend and mentor, Barry Allen, talking him through this crisis? If someone is feeling overwhelmed with suicidal thoughts, they shouldn't try to work it out themselves. They need to seek out a friend, family member, or medical professional. This sends a terrible message concerning the very real topic of suicide being covered in Heroes in Crisis. King summons his inner Ben this last half of the book, and it gets very, very wordy. He really makes man earn his keep, making space for all the dialogue. Speaking of man, is it just me, or does the second panel featuring Booster look extremely out of place? I'm not sure who covered the original art, but it's not seamless at all. There's also some pointless dialogue about sweet potatoes in here somewhere. Wally eventually reassures Wally they're in this together, which was already firmly established. Not really sure why they needed an establishing shot of Sanctuary, but man makes this very mundane, overly wordy page look like a million bucks. Despite time travel being used, Wally explains why he can't go back in time to fix his mistake. He would cause another flashpoint, like the one that cost him his family. Wally explains he needs to kill his future self to buy him more time. Not really sure what he was planning on doing with these extra five days, but I'll bet he was going to make them count. Wally finally explains he came to kill Wally because maybe by killing himself, but not actually killing himself, he could help people. It would be so much more effective if Barry was here helping Wally heal. I'm not sure how many balls King dropped on this book, but it was a lot. Wally tells Wally that Superman came out and told people the truth. I'm assuming this is in reference to Superman's very lame speech four months ago. What the hell happened to Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman anyway? They saw there was a huge murder scene and seemingly went back to business as usual. Sanctuary was their terrible idea. Those murders are nearly as much their fault as Wally's, and they never came back to the story. Makes absolutely no damn sense. You know what else doesn't make sense? A speedster saying something happened so fast it overwhelmed him. Speedsters experience time in slow motion compared to normal people. Nothing happens so fast for them but other speedsters and speed force related anomalies. This story was billed as an exploration of PTSD and other mental health related illnesses. It rarely covered that topic and never will. This has been one of the worst murder mystery books of all times. It's also a pretty unfair indictment on people suffering mental health issues. Wally went to sanctuary seeking help. The treatment didn't work for him, but nobody at the facility even noticed he was falling deeper into personal crisis. If someone reads this and can relate to Wally, why would they seek help? Nobody can help Wally, and in the end he kills a bunch of heroes and friends. He frames innocent people because of his mental breakdown. Tom King and the editors at DC Comics did not think this story and its implications through, in my opinion. If Wally didn't kill his future self and plant the body, how did his dead body get there in the first place? Booster decides since they can't travel to the past to fix a problem, they can travel to the future. Of course, to get back from the future, they have to travel back to the past, but that's besides the point. 
He'll just go to the 21st century and speed clone Flash. King wasted four pages on confessionals and a third of an issue on throwaway character Nart. Now, when it's time to explain his story, there isn't room, so he creates a time MacGuffin and explains it in a few lines of dialogue. This is why I hate time travel in comics. It lets writers take the laziest, most unimaginative ways to explain their own plot contrivances. In the end, Wally is still a murderer who framed innocent people for his crimes. He sought out medical treatment for his mental health issues, but no one at Sanctuary even noticed he was slipping deeper into crisis. The Justice League finally reappeared to take Wally to prison for his crimes. Heroes in Crisis was supposed to be a deeper look into PTSD. It ended up being an unfair portrayal of responsible people seeking help. Wally's best friend and mentor Barry Allen didn't help him. The staff at Sanctuary didn't help him. Even Superman himself was too busy to see Wally was in pain and getting worse. Wally West is a murderer now and going to prison. The message Heroes in Crisis 9 tries to portray is a good one. If you are hurting, you are not alone. There are better days ahead. But it was delivered terribly. This is an awful end to an awful series. Wally West, the definitive flash for a generation of DC fans, is no longer a hero. In his moment of need, nobody took the time to tell him he wasn't alone and help him. Until it was far too late. The deed was done and he was a murderer who frames innocent people for his crimes and plans to kill himself. I can't think of a more cynical take on mental illness. I can't think of a worse example for people in need of help to see. Tom King is in a terrible place as a writer. Heroes in Crisis and the complete destruction of Wally West is a stain on his rapidly deteriorating reputation among comic book readers. DC Comics was once the universe of hope and heroic ideals to strive for. DC Comics is now the universe of hopelessness and ugliness. I couldn't be more disappointed in this entire series or the current direction of DC Comics. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.